I think I have another one that is worth post-processing. Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. And tonight I'm gonna take a little low-light evening photo walk here in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, in Bukit Bintang area to be precise. I'm going to be shooting low-light street photos with high ISO values and I'll explain my camera settings a little bit later in this video and if my photos turn up too noisy I'm going to use Topaz A Photo AI to get rid of all the excessive noise in my pictures. This uh, video is not sponsored by Topaz Labs but I have used the Photo AI in the past with very good results and I thought Tonight might be one of those scenarios where photo AI can be very useful. I usually can tolerate quite a lot of noise in my pictures, but sometimes too much is too much. Here's my first picture. Let's go inside and check out what Topaz Photo AI can do with this picture. And then we'll come back here and shoot some more. So here's the first picture. I'm gonna do some basic uh, raw adjustments first in Lightroom and I also want to crop this picture slightly because it improves that way and you should never be afraid to crop your pictures if uh, that makes them better. The camera ISO was or is 6400 but I have to push the exposure a little bit by about a uh, stop and a third in post to make the picture slightly brighter and the end result is a little bit noisy not too bad actually the Ricoh does a really nice job here but still I want to see what photo AI can do with the picture I'm not going to do anything manually in photo AI I'm just going to let the autopilot uh, do what it wants to do. It basically inspects the picture and then it decides what it wants to do. And this is so great because I don't have to do anything. I'll just uh, admire the end result. And here we can see the end result. It is super, super clean. And um, to be honest, I think the photo AI result um, is a little bit too clean to my taste, but the Ricoh uh, result or the JPEG from Lightroom is a little bit too noisy so I think my optimal result uh, to my taste would be somewhere between these two uh, results but still Photo AI does a really really nice job here if you happen to like this super clean look and uh, by the way Topaz Labs has some really nice Black Friday deals right now I'm going to put an affiliate link down below just in case you got interested. Please check it out. Let's go now back to the street and find another picture to process. I want to avoid motion blur when I'm shooting these walking people on the street. And to be able to do that, I need a relatively fast shutter speed. My camera today is or tonight is the Ricoh GR3X and I'm using uh, shutter priority mode and I set my shutter speed to 1 over 250 and that should be enough to stop uh, walking people and other moderately fast subjects. I have my auto ISO on so my ISO values change with the light levels. More light, less ISO, less light, more ISO. I got a really nice battery life saving tip from Lucas who runs iExplore channel. I started watching his tips uh, video just out of curiosity and I was pretty sure there's nothing for me because I am an expert GR3 user but I was wrong. He shared a really nice battery life saving tip. He set the display button so that with one press the screen goes on and off and of course um, when the screen is off it's pretty much the same as the whole camera is off when it comes to battery life 
before I used to turn my camera on and off uh, between the shots. But of course, uh, it's not very good for the lens because it goes back and forth all the time. So I'm pretty sure the screen on and off uh, way is much better for the lens on the long run. And I think it's a really great tip. And if you don't know Lucas and I Explore channel, please check it out. I'll put a link down below. He seems like a really, really nice guy and he's not a pixel peeper. My ISO values inevitably creep up because of the low light levels and my relatively fast 1 over 250 shutter speed. And uh, the stabilizer doesn't help much either because I want to freeze motion. You can get away with relatively long shutter speeds if your scene has no moving ele elements. But today or tonight I want to be able to freeze motion and uh, freeze action. I think I have another one that is worth post-processing, so let's go inside once again and check it out and uh, see if Photo AI can work some magic on this picture and then we'll come back here and shoot some more. In this picture I'm not too crazy about the electric cable running across the picture, but the light is so pretty that I simply had to hit the shutter. My camera I saw here is 6400 again and I had to also I had to push the exposure by about a stop and a third here to make the brightness look uh, about right and that made this picture slightly noisy it's not too bad but it still has some noise I also added some contrast and uh, pulled back some highlights, lifted some shadows, added some vignetting and some basic settings in Lightroom. And now we're gonna open this in Photo AI and see what happens. Here it is in Photo AI again with Autopilot. I simply like it because it is so convenient, no manual labor involved. This result, to my taste again, I think it's a little bit too clean but impressive anyway and like I said earlier if you like this super clean look I think Photo AI is definitely for you and the best part is that it is so easy to use. Let's go back outside and take a couple more pictures. I really love this Ricoh GR3X camera but in this low light environment with a lot of moving elements, people coming in and going out of my picture, I realized that uh, focusing can be a small challenge. And I realized that some of my pictures are not sharp where they should be sharp. So maybe I have to practice uh, pre-focusing or something a little bit uh, more. Let's go inside and check out this one more picture and uh, process it with Photo AI and then we'll come back here and shoot some more. In this particular picture you can clearly see how the fast series speed can work and uh, freeze all action. All the rice flying in the walk is completely frozen, no motion blur whatsoever and I like this. It's a nice uh, little action shot in the in that street kitchen and my camera ISO again is 6400 I had to uh, push the exposure in post uh, by about two-thirds of a stop to increase the brightness just a little bit added some contrast pulled back some highlights um, pushed shadows a little bit added some vignetting some really basic settings here and now let's open this in Photo AI to reduce some of the noise. Uh, the noise levels are not so bad in this picture but if you blow it up you can clearly see that there is some noise in this in this picture. Once again the result is super clean, very little detail is lost and definitely if you like this clean look i think photo ai could work for you really well and please do check out the link down below it's an affiliate link uh, for topaz labs 
Black Friday deals and I think now it would be a good time to buy one of their uh, apps if you feel that you need something like Photo AI or some other app to enhance your pictures. Now let's get back to the street and uh, maybe we can find another picture. Usually I let my shutter speed stretch quite long and I don't mind a little bit of uh, motion blur in my pictures but today <laughs> but tonight I wanted to try it like this and uh, try to freeze motion. I also don't do low-light street photography very often when I'm in Finland because uh, in Finland whenever the low light is low also the weather tends to be on the cold side and sometimes in the summer when we have warm days and warm nights it's not um, dark enough to do any kind of low-light photography. I hope you enjoyed this little low-light adventure here in Kuala Lumpur, Bukit Bintang. And if you found this video useful and entertaining, please consider buying me a cup of coffee. There's a link down below if you don't live in Finland. Thanks so much for watching and I'll definitely see you in the next video.